On Moonshots, we talk a lot about, you know, to entrepreneurs about your massive transformative purpose and your moonshot. Like, you know, I define an MTP as something that wakes you up in the morning, keeps you going at night. It's your North Star. It is mm-hmm. what, um, uh, what drives you. What drives you? I think what drives me has changed over time. Sure. Uh, and and I, one of the yeah. things, by the way, for me too, right? I'm in my third or fourth MTP. It was like mm-hmm. started space, then went up to, you know, uh, solving global grand challenges and then supporting entrepreneurs and now in longevity. But so uh, take me back. What what have been your sort of like your decadal MTPs, if you would? Wow, I love that question. Um, such a great framing. Um, so I would say, okay, so I go way back. Um, the, the, the initial, initial one was really around, you know, I was struggling with undiagnosed ADHD and learning differences when I was younger. This was at what age? Uh, in the second grade when I was seven years old, um, I'd sit at the back of the class, completely frustrated, um, feeling demoralized. Nothing was working. Um, my mom tried flashcards, cue cards, um, nothing worked. I couldn't, I wasn't able to keep up with anything, wasn't connected socially with anybody. Uh, and what happened was the teacher at the end of the year pulled my parents aside and said that he would like to have me repeat the second grade. Wow. Um, and my parents negotiated for me to spend time with tutors during the summer to then be able to catch up and go on to the third grade. And what happened that summer is um, I went in one day and uh, the tutor asked, uh, you know, read a passage, asked me some questions. Um, I gave some answers, um, but then she asked me a question that no one had ever asked me before that transformed my life and led to the first, um, you called it M- M- MTP, MTP. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. uh, my first, uh, yeah, massive transformative, um, what was P- it? Purpose. Purpose. Yes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's okay. Um, and, uh, and that was, uh, so I gave, I gave the answers and then she looked me in the eye and she said, how did you think about that? And, and uh. That question actually created this newfound awareness for me that um, that was so transformative because it then became my mission to figure out, like I almost felt like kind of looking back, like I had this hardware in my mind, but I didn't have software. And I had to figure out how do I test various algorithms, patterns that I was observing in other people to create my own software for functioning and surviving in the education system. So wow. that was my first sort of mission um, that, uh, that, that I was focused on. What's your advice to a mom or a dad in this situation with their young child? Well, one, one of the things that- And I know uh, you've got an entire book on this, so we'll get into it a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I think for me, what I've realized, um, and I, I feel like you know, parenting is is perhaps one of the most challenging jobs, roles that anyone could ever and, have, and the and most and most important for society and, and for most every, important, yeah. 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 Um, and what I've learned is, um, first and foremost, is is just to find ways to support children in whatever they're experiencing and going through. I feel like there's been this tendency for me with my children to kind of try to push them to extract potential because I see this incredible potential in my children and I find myself almost sort of treating them as if I was it was tre- I was treating myself you know sure. like I was sort of trying to extract I'm always trying to extract my potential and I feel that that doesn't work really well and what works well I think is the support just finding ways to support and one of the ways that my mom supported me was, you know, here I was like a C and D student, really struggling, feeling like I didn't fit in like an alien. Um, I think a lot of kids, you kind of slip through the cracks and uh, who have, uh, who are neurodiverse and become addicts. Mm -hmm. Um, And my mom uh, wrote speeches for me because there was public speaking contests and she would coach me in memorizing and then, and, and saying these speeches and I got better and better and better, and I started to win competitions. Ah. And so that was the one thing that I had going for me where I was able to build my confidence. Mm. And so I think that kind of the parallel or, or potential there for you know um, advice maybe for, for parents is to find that one thing where whatever does, it could be anything where the child can build a little bit of confidence every day. Maybe it's like finding a mentor who can help, um, you know, that, that the child's really excited to, to be with and learn from and to explore and build skills and really tap into that 
um, the energy that we get from learning and gaining insights and, and building a skill, because I think that can really carry the day and that always stays with you. Yeah, I, I think about my parents wanted me to become a doctor. Mm. I wanted to become an astronaut, mm. right? <laughs> and and that, that struggle, and I went through medical school and make my parents happy. Oh. Shipped my dad a copy of my diploma when I graduated mm. and then went on to follow my, my space passions. I've come back full cycle to, to medicine uh, a few decades later. Uh, did your parents have a mission or purpose for you? Or I, um, it, I felt like, you know, there was a lot of dentists in my family. There's some doctors in my family. And, and I, I did feel that that was sort of the path that people would um, sort of, uh, there was appreciation for anyone in the family who, mm -hmm. you know, the way people talked spoke about other family members and going into careers, if it was like a doctor or a lawyer or, you know, something like that, a dentist, um, people would get excited about it. So, um, but I also, I, I think, um, you know, I had a lot of teachers that were giving me labels. Um, and so like, like lazy, um, uh, lost cause troublemaker, wow. Um, once I was helping another child and the teacher came over and said, oh, isn't that the, like the blind leading the blind? Um, and then I, they asked me one day, what do you want to be? And I said, I want to be a doctor. Um, and the teacher said, well, you better set your sights lower because you really just don't have, have that in you. American education system at work, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> so my parents were more focused on, uh, you know, trying to um, not let that become my label yeah. and to, for, for me to, you know, and my mom constantly was telling me, she was like, you know, you have superpowers and it was kind of hard for me to believe, but she said it so often that, you know, I started to believe it mm -hmm. and, um, and I started to imagine it and kind of fantasize about that. Um, and I remember distinctly in elementary school, like being in class, like trying to almost like think like, I could see things that others couldn't and I couldn't really, but like, I felt like maybe I could, you know, yeah, like it's a confidence building game to believe in yourself and not let yourself be put down yeah. by the world around you. Yeah. So that was your sort of first MTP early on. Mm -hmm. Where'd you go next? Uh, on on your purpose what was it that drove you so what happened was um my uh okay so my mom nobody wanted to uh to do anything about these challenges i was encountering no one was talking about adhd at the time my mom went up against the school board on her own uh, with a massive file she had recorded everything that teachers had ever said written about me all my grades and everything and she went to the school board and actually got me identified as having learning differences, which then got, got me special accommodations, a little bit extra space, extra time on my assignments and tests and exams. And um, I had been developing all these tools, studying patterns um, in- uh, well, How old are you at this point? At this point, uh, I would have been, um, let's see, uh, maybe 12. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, what happened was my grades went from C's and D's to straight A's and the struggles remained. Uh, I felt like I always had to work twice as hard as everyone else. I was always, I was the kid who was going in on weekends, like trying to meet with teachers to go over things hmm. and, and after school and just constantly working and, and trying to focus because my, I was pretty extreme uh, ADHD. And so the next sort of, you know, MTP phase for me um, was focusing on how I could maintain straight A's because my grades went to straight, as soon as I got into the seventh grade, my grades went to straight A's. And so I, I just kept focusing on, I guess the MTP was on how could I improve my efficiencies because everything took me a long time. It was almost like, um, you know, in the movie Terminator, the original one, there's this scene where um, he goes it's to say something and the screen pops up and there's like, five or six different options of what he can say and he's trying to figure out which one um, and then, you know, select something. That's how I feel even today. Like, it's like, I, I see many possibilities when I'm asked a question in, in let's say in school, um, I don't, I, I see many possible answers and I don't know which one the teacher wants the most. And so I need time to figure out the probabilities around which answer to, to give back. Mm. And that actually makes it really challenging for me to help my children with their homework. They don't like me. They, they say they don't want me to help them at all because I don't I don't really I, I don't see the linear way that this education system kind of works. Mm. And so so my focus then at that time was really on how do I 
how do I get more efficient? How do I observe people around me? And what are their tools and strategies for being efficient with their time? And how do they approach problems and doing their homework and doing these things? And what can I experiment with? And I almost see everything as algorithms around me. So I'm constantly trying different algorithms that I see in, in environments, how people behave, what they say in certain scenarios. And then I try those algorithms on and see how they feel. And I'm constantly iterating and adapting them. And so that's where a huge part of my life was focused after the seventh grade. You, you sound like a, a, a perfect analog for an AI learning system. Yeah. 